Okay, we'll try to take a look at what is known as background estimation or background subtraction and template matching. Both cases can be used to, to locate objects uh, that, uh, that doesn't belong in, in a scene uh, somehow. The idea with the background, est background estimation or background subtraction uh, set of methods is you want to, for a certain frame you want to analyze, you want to have a, a background model you have built based on earlier input or earlier frames you have seen in, in the video. And then you want to compare your current frame with the background model and see if if this uh, current frame actually differs and in which location it differs from the background model. And that can be done by subtracting these two from each other and comparing with a, a known threshold. And for all the pixels that uh, has a value that or a difference that is higher than this threshold, um, the pixel will be marked as, as a foreground pixel and the rest of the pixel will be part of the background. And this can actually be done in a quite simple way. Um, and the most simple approach I can uh, come to think of is to use the previous frame as a model of the background. And then we simply just compare uh, the, the current frame to, to the previous one. It's a quite rough model of, of the background. But when objects are moving quite fast, it actually works out. Uh, very well. Um, so far, so good. Um, one issue here is that is this doesn't work well well when you have something that moves very slowly, because then the object you're actually tracking will be part of the background, and you can only see the front and the back of the object that is moving if if it has the same uh, color all the way through. So that's a, a bit of a problem. A different thing to uh, consider is also in some cases you have uh, things that are part of the background that is also moving and how to put that into the, the system. Um, for instance it could be uh, trees like this which is uh, bending according to, to the wind. So a pixel up here will always be some kind of blue but a pixel next to a tree will sometimes be blue and uh, because it's uh, the sky we're seeing, and Tom so sometimes uh, the tree will actually bend in that direction and, and cover the, the pixel and, and change its value. And these elements should also be be part of uh, what is being being recognized. Um, yes, I'll try to to draw from from scratch here. Good. So if we have the, the time on this axis and we have the intensity of the image up here, then one a simple background image could uh, looks uh, of model of the background could, could be like this, where we have more or less uh, the same value um, of the pixel in, in all the frames. There can be some, some noise uh, due to how we have um, created the, the image. Um, but this is what we, we want to expect. Uh, in the different scenario where we have something that uh, sometimes is part of the background or sometimes one pixel in the background is, is from one object and a bit later it's from a different object, then the in pixel intensity over time might uh, look like this, where we have one stable value up here and a different stable value down here and everything between is, is not seen at all. Um, so these are, are different uh, types of, of background that would be, be nice to be able to recognize. A quite simple way of, of making a, a model like this is to, to look at all the pixel values in a certain uh, amount of time and then calculate the, the mean value and some uncertainty. Um, around that, or the standard deviation of that, and then use these values to compare a new observation um, with, so if I see an observation here, 
which is uh, quite close to, to the middle of this distribution. I find it's part of the, the background. It doesn't surprise us compared to what we have seen of, of earlier background pixels. But if we get a value up here, it's clearly out of the, the bounds of, of this distribution, so that would be recognized as, as a foreground uh, pixel, and that would be a background here down here. And similarly here, if we have uh, new pixel intensities like this, they will belong to the background because uh, we have seen something like this before that is part of the background. But if we see something right between these two, then it shouldn't be part of the background because either the background was uh, quite bright or it was uh, yeah, this uh, bright blue or uh, a bit darker green in the images we saw before. So yes, let's let me just uh, demonstrate uh, a few results of how uh, some some color values actually look like um, from a, a video, a small video I have uh, analyzed here. We have some color values of a single location down here and some color values of a different location up here. And what we can see is that the intensity of the pixel values here seems to decay a bit. That could be due to changes in illumination. Um, and we can also see that some uh, quite drastic events are happening at this location and around these, this time and, and this time for, for these pixels. And this is an indication of that it is not the background object anymore that we are seeing, but some kind of foreground object is uh, going to, to disturb the system. And let's take a look at how we can actually detect motion in, in this case. So up here we have the, um, the, the input frame. Over here we have the, the mean image, which is an average over all frames we have seen until now. Um, then the, the mean Im image and the background is uh, subtracted from each other, which gives us the image down here. And finally, the images that are subtracted from each other is passed through a threshold. And we get, uh, get the result over here, where we can see how things are, are moving uh, around uh, quite nicely and where things are sticking out from, from the background. And I think it works extremely well uh, for, for this case. So that was an, uh, an example of, of a background estimator. Um, if you need to deal with uh, these kinds of, of signals that have uh, multiple values, um, you will often need to use a mixed Gaussian model or mixture of Gaussians, I think it's called. And some of these models are actually implemented in, in OpenCV. There's this uh, background subtractor MOG for mixture of Gaussians. Uh, that when applied to uh, a scene of pedestrians produces uh, this output. And there is an extended version of this, Mark II. And there is a generalized mixture of Gaussians uh, model here at the end also. So these are three different uh, implementations of, of background subtractor um, that can be used from, from OpenCV. One thing that is very important when you are using a background subtractor is that um, the, this background should not move. Um, so the assumptions is uh, still uh, background, which means that the background should appear uh, in the same way um, over the, the entire video. It's allowed to, to change slowly 
uh, due to changes in illumination. Um, but um, it, it doesn't really make sense if you change the field of view of the camera and so on, then it will be a, a completely new scene that it should learn the new background uh, um, for. And, and in that case, these uh, methods uh, doesn't work that well. Um, good. A different way of, of locating um, objects in a scene if you is if you actually know how these objects are looking uh, very precisely. And that can be used to, for instance, locate um, certain boxes in this uh, Mario world. Um, where I've taken out a small box containing a question mark. And if we want to locate the position of this question mark within this frame, we can may do what is known as, as template matching, where we take the template or the small image and put on top of each possible location in the input we want to, to locate, locate the template within, and then see, okay, how well does it match in this location? Move it one pixel to the right, and how well does it match here? And when we put it in a place where it doesn't match, then we should get a, a high error value. And if we put it in a location where we actually have the the thing we are searching for, it should get uh, get us a very low value. The equation is looks like this and can actually be implemented as as what is known as a, a convolution. It's implemented in, in OpenCV through this uh, match template uh, method. And it can output results in various ways that can be normalized in, in different, uh, different ways. The output of the template matching process as, uh, well, using the input images that we, we saw before, using a, a square difference uh, value is the image here. The brighter the value, the larger the difference between the template and, and the image at that point. And we can see that there are three locations here that have a, a zero uh, difference. That means that uh, the template and the image at that location was completely identical. And that precisely matches the location of uh, these three question marks in the scenes. And uh, a few considerations on, on when this template matching uh, will work. Um, that's, um, let's just uh, write down. So it works when the template and the scene has the same orientation. And it should also have the same size. Otherwise, the, the calculated error will be big uh, between the template and, and the scene. Later in the course, we'll look at a certain family of, of templates that actually don't need to have the same orientation, but they are quite limited in, in how they are allowed to, to be, and we need to use uh, complex numbers for um, for doing this. Um, but this will give us some, some new properties to, to work with in, in this situation. Good. That's it. I hope you learned a bit about this on background estimation and template matching.